against my All right folks, show's over. Welcome back to reality. Or I guess it's more accurate to say welcome back to the morgue. Yeah, some of these people were killed while having a drink waiting for Domino to come on stage. I guess there are worse ways to go. Ironic, considering the act that we're waiting for was outside the casino at the time. Lucky bastard. You see, Lady Luck, this is why I gave up on you. Now, I'm no angel. If anything, I wear that as a badge of honor. But Domino? Seriously? That's who you're sucking off? Oh, for shame. Anyway, you can come out now, big shot. Oh, those electric ghosts aren't the kind of audience I like at the best of times. At least the ones in the villa had manners. Don't even know how I ended up here. Guess the casino still recognizes guests, even after all this time, huh? <laughs> How's that for history? You say that, but the same system decided to drop Dog off at the kitchen. As far as I know, pre-war chefs did not look like that. Not unless they were serving something really exotic. Anyway, it's a good thing I can still run past those holograms. Considering all the cloud I've been breathing in, I'm amazed I didn't get winded just walking over here. Look, I'm more about the short goodbyes than long, thankful speeches. But I appreciate you bailing me out of a tight spot there, partner. I know you didn't do it out of the goodness of your heart. So let me give you something a little more practical. A way we both come out ahead. Yeah? I can't imagine what it could be that you didn't think to mention it before all this. You do realize I'm fighting for all of our survival, right? Anything you can do to help me is the same as helping yourself. I can't believe I'm still explaining this to you. I'm not an idiot. Really? I know the reason I'm in here now is because of the old guy. And you. And you're wearing a collar, so I trust you a little more than the old guy. I'm so honored. He's more controlling than I'd like. Thing is, here's where being my partner pays off. See, I know how to get into the casino vault. Oh. Well, that's an interesting twist that I totally didn't see coming. Do tell. There's a private elevator, Sinclair's elevator. It's up in the executive suites in Vera's room. Ah. Not a coincidence. You don't say. Vera. She was my other partner before the bomb. Took some legwork. Some convincing made it happen. Yeah, I've read more than enough terminal entries to notice that. You guys weren't exactly subtle about it either. The villa doctor already suspected something was up, by the way. Normally, I wouldn't rat someone out like that, but he's dead. He could sue me in hell. So, what kind of legwork did you resort to, and how much grease did it involve? Sinclair was already puppy-eyed, so all I had to do was the introductions. She smiled, fluttered her eyes, showed a little leg... And he built this whole place for her. Made her the key to his vault. Like a joke. Joke? Because of her name. Oh. Her fake Hollywood name. Except Sinclair didn't know I'd been there first. I could twist her whatever direction I wanted. Yeah, and you were kind enough to leave evidence of that behind. About this, you are safe. What was the idea behind recording you threatening her? Was it to leave evidence that she was complicit in case she turned on you? Can't imagine why she would ever do that. Yeah? A little bit of too real memories? We're here to steal from the Sierra Madre, not from each other. Oh, spare me. I've been looting the dead since time immemorial. You think I would give two shits about looting from you? Especially when it's a recording of you blackmailing a naive young lady. And I bet it wasn't your first time doing that either. You sounded like a seasoned veteran. Blackmail is such a strong word. I asked her, she said yes, then she started to get cold feet. I blame Sinclair. He was such a victim that maybe she felt it would be too easy. It doesn't matter. Doesn't it? Maybe if you paid more attention to why she was getting cold feet, you'd have known how to ease her concerns better. What did you need her to do anyway? You already knew about the elevator. How was Vera the key to all this? Sinclair built this whole town to accommodate her. Same with the casino's voice lock. 
He wanted to make sure she had access to everything. And since I already had access to Vera, well, that meant I had access to the vault, too. Hold on. In your holotape, you were threatening to send her back to the farm. Well, that was clearly bullshit if you needed her voice to open the vault. She really should have realized that. Whatever you were blackmailing her with must have been devastating. What wasn't I blackmailing her with? Chemus, indiscretions, more chemus, the usual Hollywood tune. Like Sinclair, people are the architects of their own misfortunes. Leave themselves wide open for someone to waltz right in and take what they want. As long as they take a single step into the trap, get a few pictures, get a little dirt, and that person's your piano. Vera? Med X was her thing. Even super stimmed herself for the after rush. Sick. Sick? Yes, she was sick. Her doctor prescribed the medics and super stim as part of her treatment, and if you paid attention, you would have known that. Oh, but what am I saying? You never gave a shit about her health anyway. You just needed her to do her part of the plan, right? I bet you would have silenced her right after that. I know how your type thinks. All she had to do was get inside the Sierra Madre for the gala, then use her voice to open the door. After that, smooth sailing would have been the biggest heist in history. Sinclair left holding the bag. Ruined. Good grief. Did you have a burlap sack and a fake moustache you could twirl while you escaped? I know you had a moustache before the war, but it wasn't the right type for that. So, why didn't you pull through with your plan? You didn't get locked inside the casino like the others, so clearly something went wrong. Did you realize that whatever he had in the vault was way too much for one person to steal, even with a burlap sack? The bomb. Vera got sealed in here. A few hundred years go by, give or take. Almost the end of the story. Then you came along. Now we finish the job. Rob the Sierra Madre, rip out its heart. Last chapter of Frederick Sinclair. Close the book. Seriously? Okay, buddy, I'm gonna be real with you right now. The world outside the Sierra Madre has changed a lot. If Sinclair had pre-war banknotes in there, even if he had hundreds of billions of old world dollars worth, it's only worth its weight in cloth by now. You might get rich if there's gold bullions in there, but what are you gonna do? Hold that shit all the way back to civilization on foot? Please. This has nothing to do with riches, I've realized that much. You just want to rub Sinclair's face in it. Well, sorry to burst your bubble, but unless he's frozen himself, he's probably nothing more than bones and dust by now. I don't know what your problem with him was, but it's fucking over. Problem? All high and mighty. Oh my god. Lording it over everyone. Acting so self-righteous, like nothing could touch him. He was the one with the problem. Whatever you say. Never got mad at anything. Nothing seemed to shake him. Even after his life kept getting dragged through the dirt. Always kept looking for the bright, shining future in everything. So, I decided to take everything from him. Because his sunny optimism was such a big insult to you? Dude, what the fuck? You had a career in show business. You were traveling the world, singing at the fronts or wherever the hell that is. You were probably rich beyond most people's wildest dreams, and yet you had the time to get upset over someone who was probably less financially secure than yourself? Was being a celebrity getting boring or something? What did Sinclair ever do to you? Do to me? What, weren't you listening? He thought he was better than me. Oh, fuck off. Don't believe me? Look around. This big casino. This big colossal monument. Think it was for some woman? No. All ego. All self-righteous in lights. Fit him perfect. Had to take him down a few pegs. Bring him down to my level. Begin again? 
Some things you don't get up from. I was going to prove it. If ego is what you can't stand, then clearly you've never been to Vegas. That place will make your head explode. Oh man, I wish I kept Robert House alive long enough for you to meet him. That man was ego and self-indulgence incarnate. You would have known about him back in your day, and yet you didn't go after him, did you? Not someone who could have slapped you back down to your place. Uh, but it's too late for that, just like it's too late for you to prove your point. I mean, who are you even proving it to? Sinclair is gone, Vera is gone, the whole fucking world you knew is gone. Even if you succeeded right now, there's a good chance no one outside would know about it or even care. And this is all just a moot point anyway, your precious key is long dead, how are you going to prove anything now? I didn't know at first. Then the old man showed up. You showed up. Then... That woman showed up, covered in scars. Christine? The one who makes all the hand signs, a little tight around the corners of her mouth. I put her in the clinic, tuned her like an instrument. You did what? If she heals up, it's not going to be her voice speaking anymore. That is, if the Sierra Madre didn't get her. If it did... Well, there's enough of Vera around for me to spend a few years piecing a book together. Did... Did I hear that right? You... Oh. Oh, bravo. Bravo. Even after everything I found out about you, you still somehow managed to exceed my expectations. Okay. So, we find Christine, then what? Then she can make some beautiful music. I'm not banking on it. So here's the short of it. Piece together Little Miss Viriki's song in the right order. Sierra Madre opens its legs we're in business. Okay. I wonder if that's the old man's plan as well. I don't suppose it matters who opens the vault, so long as you're the one who gets to do the plundering, right? Would that be enough to prove your point? Well, partner, I guess we better get on with it. Just a little thing before I go find our new Vera Keys. I need to adjust your collar a little bit. The old man is insisting on that, and you know what he's like. Shouldn't take long. Go! Knock yourself out! I'm just going to catch my breath a bit. That performance, well... More pressure than I was expecting. Oh yeah, doing the actual performance was stressful enough, but I can't imagine how hard it must have been for you to watch all that. How are your butt cheeks feeling? Sitting on them all this time must have felt like hell. No wonder you're stretching your legs. But don't you worry, I'm more than happy to find your knockoff ear keys for you. Wait a minute. There was a hologram emitter back here the whole time? You know you could have just smashed this thing up to help me out, right? You lazy piece of... <sighs> you know what? I know we shut down the security, but I still don't trust it. This whole place was designed to mock people like us, so cover your ears. This will be over quick. Another fragment. Good. Almost have the entirety of what I need from the music archives. I'm okay, by the way. Once you have the last fragment, you can thread the archives together at the main floor terminal. Can I, though? I'm not an audio expert by any stretch. Oh, let me guess. We have more visitors. Vera, what have you been doing? Hey! She's not... Contractually... Obligated to autograph any part of your body. You need a special license for that. Pay up or shut up. Alright, that's it. No more photo ops with the starlet. Oh, that one scratched my inner thigh! You were aiming for my nuts! Don't you fucking deny it. I'm too experienced for that. That was another close call, baby courier. We need to get you out of there. Whew! That medex was in your honor, Vera. It really does make your problems go away for a little while. But then it hits you back tenfold. But don't worry. I'm not gonna... judge you... much. Dean Domino was to blame, not you. Oh, but I will judge you for this. Did you only record one song? I mean, come on. 
Your face is plastered over every other poster for this place. The least you could have done was record a full album. What was Sinclair paying you for? Uh, okay, fine, he was madly in love with you, but come on, you could have put a little more effort into your act. Celebrities who don't maintain their reputation don't tend to last very long. I don't need to be your agent to tell you that. This place is running on limited power, which I can only assume means no security holograms. How about we turn down the music volume a little bit? That could save some power, right? I thought this was supposed to be a classy establishment. Only dive bars play music this loud. Anyway, I see where this is going. I can only retrieve the sweet ambient track after I recalibrate Christine's collar, is that it? And of course, if she sounds like the starlet, then the system is gonna place her in Vera's personal suite. Well, good. That woman deserves some luxury after everything she's been through. What the? Vera, where did you go? Oh, don't tell me a hologram exposed to the cloud is more resilient than one inside the casino after all this time. Oh, I'm getting out of here before more of your rabid fans show up demanding your autograph, Vera. What the hell? God, the security systems won't let me out. Vera, is that you? Find the mute and deal with her. She's somewhere on this floor. Floors buzzing with emitter signatures. Watch out for holograms. If it's who oh. I think it is, this is Christine. It sure is. Recovered. You sound good. In what looks like an old oh, wait to ruin hotel things. room. My class. Two rooms. Exit sealed. All doors are locked down. Security's activated. And emitter signals are lighting up all over this floor. I'll do what I can from here. Floor's got holographic security. Oh, wonderful. Not the latest tech. Field of view targeting systems. Primitive. Primitive? Alright, show Failure. off. Should be able to rewire them. Failing that? Shoot them. Although, that'll alert the others. They're on a linked patrol pattern. Floor looks like it protected the guests too well. Check the suite. Found the holographic woman from the Villa Fountain. What? Picking up that interference frequency, same as the Villa. Floor's live with speakers and radios. Keep an ear out. Watch the walls. Doors on this floor are all operated manually in an emergency. Place is locked up tight. Must be key cards around somewhere. Looks like security systems did more to kill the people here than the bomb did. Hope there's a way out of this casino. If it's any consolation, the locals are finding it really easy to break in. But don't worry, you and I can get through this together. Especially you, in a very fucked up way. Sinclair? What the- Sinclair, I'm trapped, please. Christine? Oh God, the security systems won't let me out. They're keeping me here. Wait, no, that can't be you. Vera? Sinclair! Sinclair! There's no way you're still in here. We all pay for what we've done. I'm so sorry, Sinclair. Okay. Sorry, I... I should have trusted you. Looks like the big secret got out after all. I'm going to die here. Amongst the ghosts. <gasps> oh! I'm still being recorded by the holographic system. They did exactly that, sister. Fucking hell, ghosts really do exist around here. And there was me wondering if you and Sinclair were frozen or are somehow still alive after all these years. Well, you kind of are. In a matter of speaking. The doors, they... They sealed. I... I can hear the other guests screaming to be let out. To let go. But you're the only one who got recorded- OH! You're one of those! Vera, darling! You gotta warn a guy before you turn yellow like that. Just... Don't come any closer. I'm sure you look smoking hot in red, but I prefer blue. Okay, you're still there. Look, I know I might be intruding on your space, but really, I'm only going to do some light looting, I promise. Yeah, it's best if you don't watch any of this. So, did Sinclair just leave her to die? That's a little harsh. Oh wow, what a place to hide that. Well, Vera, I'ma let you finish, but uh... I prefer the sweet sound of silence. How the hell do these emitters project an image through walls anyway? This tech is not just advanced, it's illogical too. What was that saying? Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic? Is that why there were two different magicians lined up to perform at the Tampico? That way Sinclair could upstage both of them with his fancy holograms? But anyway, it sounds like Vera never made it to safety, which means that it was all for nothing in the end. The villa, the casino, the technology, it was all pointless. The man bankrupted himself to build a giant tomb. That said, it was always going to be a gamble anyway. Suppose the bombs didn't drop, or they didn't drop when he thought they would. What would he have done? 
How long could he have held off his creditors? Same thing with House, now that I think about it. Both men put out a hefty investment over a hypothetical. <gasps> In the name of the Father, I will find your grave and spit on it, Sinclair! Okay, you know what? It's not worth it. You can keep your jewelry and casino chips, you privileged fuckers. But yeah, Sinclair and House had more in common than I thought. Both men spent a fortune to write out the apocalypse. Neither of them left themselves any contingency in case they were wrong, and yet both of them timed it almost perfectly. I mean, sure, Sinclair's systems broke down almost immediately, and House miscalculated by one extremely crucial day. But still, that's an incredible stroke of luck in both cases. That said, one of them survived for 200 years, and the other... It's gonna die by my hands if he survived. I swear, I'm gonna instinctively shoot any speakers and radios that come across from now on. I can never step into a bar ever again. Oh, see what I mean? I can barely step into this room. Oh, come on. Okay, that was not me being a bad shot. The bullets were literally coming out sideways. Why else were they getting caught by the door? Anyway, why is there a crafting station in the washing room? Did they have to make their own spare parts? Once again, Sinclair, you dipped into the budget for the hotel's facilities just to fund your light shows. But I guess having clean clothes became inconsequential after the bombs fell. It certainly wouldn't have been worth wasting clean water on. But honestly, I'm not sure your rich guests would have tolerated that. Sweet maintenance key, that's what the engraving says. I'm sure this was informative for the staff, but for me, that just means I've got to jam it into every locked door I come across from now on. I mean, it's either that or a screwdriver. Override emergency door seal? This is a laundry room! Uh, did the chambermaids have to share this room with maintenance? Is that why that key and the crafting station is in here? Sinclair, you know that dollar bills are made of cloth, not rubber, right? You can only stretch them so far. Been reading this over. In the event of a fire, chemical leak, nuclear attack, or other threat to the casino, the interior and exterior doors will hermetically seal to prevent harm coming to the guests. During this time, holograms will be deployed and assume threat status until the lockdown is ended. Sinclair, why the hell would you need to deploy holograms for a fire or chemical leak? Did you automatically assume those things happened because of an attack? So if one of the chefs accidentally burned a steak, you'll put the whole place into lockdown? It would be a threat against food, but not against your guests. Guess you can't be too careful these days. Still, what if there was another leak at the switching station? Not to mention the gas valves in the kitchen. If those got hit, the casino's a torch. An astute observation, sir or madam. And indeed, that almost happened 200 years later. Uh, I don't know. I'm starting to wonder if Sinclair himself actually wrote some of these policies, or if they were designed by one of his employees. For all we know, someone intentionally set this place up to fail. Because so far, that's what it feels like. Who knows what kind of people Sinclair was involved with. He might have had enemies left, right, and center. Dean Domino might have had to get in line. Hell, for all I know, he pissed off the wrong people when it came to funding this casino. I mean, I still have no idea where he was getting his money from. House at least had a corporation to back his casino fetishes. What did Sinclair have? And the kind of technology he had access to didn't even exist on the strip. Which means either House was petty enough to not allow any competitor's tech on his playground, or Sinclair somehow had the connections necessary to obtain shit that even the head of Robco couldn't get his hands on. I mean, it's clearly more than just a question of money. I don't think anyone could outspend House. So what the hell was going on behind the scenes? If Sinclair was in as much financial strife as Domino implied, then what did he have to bargain with to get all this? Either way, it didn't matter in the end. None of these technological wonders ever served their true intended purpose. All they're good for now is getting looted by scavengers. Like Elijah. And me. I need to figure out a way to drag one of these vending machines back to the Mojave. I know there's already one in that bunker, but you know what's better than one miracle machine? Two miracle machines. Besides, if anyone ever tries to reverse engineer that thing, they're gonna need at least one backup in case they completely fuck it up. Disable hallway speakers, okay, yep, that confirms it. This corner of the room is the maintenance department. Imagine trying to concentrate on delicate machinery while half a dozen washing machines are going off at the same time. Starlet Hologram Code Snippet. I don't know what that does, but hey, this pit boys data storage capacity is a bottomless pit, so I'll take it. Superheated knife recipe. Yeah, why not? I know people I would like to stick something like that into. On a completely unrelated note, Elijah could use a shave. Played around with this the other day. Whoa, dude, never use the phrase played around when you're talking about a fucking knife. 
One cosmic piece of shit knife, one pilot light, one hot plate, something to hold the damn thing to cook evenly, preheat oven to 450 degrees, take one knife, leave on stove, let simmer for 5 minutes, watch as knife glows red hot, put knife on table, melts table, sue scientists who made the damn thing, give it to the military? Okay, you know what, I don't think I'm gonna try this. I'll let somebody else try it, but if this thing can melt through a table, then it can certainly melt through my pockets. I don't need to know what my own flesh smells like when it's well done, thank you very much. Loudspeakers offline. Does that mean all speakers in the suites, or just an arbitrary subsection of them? I wouldn't put it past Sinclair to have redundant speakers. You can't rely on a single point of failure. Gotta make sure music plays no matter what, right? Okay, so does the key work? It does! I'll add it to my growing collection. Hmm. Oh, that was the metal door at the beginning. What's over here? More sweet? Why would you need an industrial strength door here? Gotta keep the drunken guests locked away from the sober ones, is that it? If so, then I'm expecting a lot of mess in here. Came so far to be here. Oh no. no. Is that you again, Vera? No, I just wanna yep. leave. Oh fuck Please. me. Let me leave. Why was there a recording function for the security holograms in the first place? Did they throw that functionality in there so they could inflate the price? More importantly, did you really fall for that bullshit, Sinclair? Holy shit. It's a security office. At least I assume that's the case, unless it just had shotguns lying around for the guests to use. Maybe it's available to rent, I don't know. Not sure why they have one up here. I understand why they had one on the casino floor, but in the hotel suites too? How rowdy were they expecting people to get? Depends on what kind of alcohol they had access to, I suppose. Sinclair did have controls in place against chems. Even though I've had no trouble finding them lying around. Either way, that metal door just became another barrier to seal people inside. Maybe it was just part of the attempt at making an above-ground vault. I wonder if Sinclair ever hired consultants from Vault Tech. If anyone knew how to make fallout shelters, it would have been them. That said, I hope he only took suggestions on the physical building itself and nothing else. Those guys had more than enough volts to fuck around with. They didn't need to experiment on the casino, that's what Vault 21 was for. No, the only thing anyone could have learned from this place is why you should never delegate security to automated holograms. Or robots for that matter. You hear that, Bobby? Would your Securitrons have done any better than Sinclair's holograms? The Sierra Madre is just one villa and one casino. You had the whole strip to police and beyond if you had any common sense to keep an eye on the outside world. That said, you could still fall back on the three families, I suppose. When they weren't plotting behind your back. Unlock security closet and recalibrate hologram IFF. What's IFF? Is that something to do with targeting? I mean, by all means, if they're already gonna shoot on sight, then recalibration can't make it any worse. Now I just have to test that theory. Oh boy. Anyway, I guess House would have had the Securitron army and the three families to balance each other out. If any of them went out of line, then he could have slapped them back down with his robots. But if the robots got out of control, like the holograms have here, then could he have relied on the three families to bail him out? I seriously doubt that. I mean, sure, at least you can shoot the robots unlike the holograms, but I can't picture any of those guys busting into the Lucky 38 to save Bobby's wrinkled ass. No, if I were him, I would still try to recruit an actual human police force. Robots and automated systems should be used as augmentations, not replacements. Okay, I have no one to use as a pack Brahmin right now, I'm gonna have to leave it. Which is blasphemy for someone like me, but I can only carry one homemade backpack. Anyway, from what Bobby showed me, those Securitrons are better used as war machines. Oh, oh shit. Sinclair, where did you go? Here we go. Why did you leave me here? Why? Did the recalibration work? If so, that's all they had to do to save themselves. Sinclair, is that you? Holy shit, it did work! Did nobody think to do this on the night shit went down? Who was on duty at the time? It was literally one option on a terminal. Didn't need a separate authentication process, didn't even ask if I was sure. I changed my mind. Human security guards were clearly fucking useless. Let me guess, they were all too busy watching the Gala event. Even if nothing triggered the security systems, didn't they realize that such a loud and attention-grabbing event would have been the perfect opportunity for thieves to steal shit from the hotel rooms while everyone was distracted? What's this, a sweet password reminder? Sorry guys, didn't need it to get around your incompetent procedures. I guess the villa foreman wasn't the only one trying to scam Sinclair, the head of security had a good go at it too. 
The difference here is that the head of security's fuck up actually did end up hurting what Sinclair really cared about. That said, it sounds like he wasn't exactly thrilled with Vera in the end. Was this all for nothing after all? Hmm. Even if the holograms didn't go berserk, I'm not sure how long this place could have lasted against the cloud. Sure, it could preserve things, but there's no point preserving a building if it kills the inhabitants. Either way, it was rather optimistic of Sinclair to assume that outside help was ever coming. Even if the emergency services still existed, did he really think they would be able to spare the resources to come to this place? A place that he deliberately made difficult to access? How much are your pre-war connections worth in this brave new world? No, in the aftermath of such a calamity, what little remained of the authorities would have had to choose who to save and who to ignore. And this place would have been pretty damn low on their priorities list. I mean, what could your rich patrons offer in a post-war world? Money that's no longer accepted? Jewelry that you cannot use or eat? The only thing Sinclair could have offered in exchange would have been the stuff coming out of those vending machines. Out of all the worthless investments he made in this project, those things were the only ones that were money well spent. Speak of the devil. If Christine is down with this, then I'm gonna pick her brains on how this stuff works. Oh wow, that was an awful choice of words on my part. I am so sorry. That somehow didn't ignite the gas, which I totally noticed just now. Oh god damn it, I can see the valve. Here we go again! <gasps> oh, and we can breathe again. And apparently even the room can breathe again too. You know, considering all the gas leaks around here, that person in the terminal hit the nail on the head. This place would have turned into a pressure cooker over time. I'm frankly amazed there hasn't been a massive gas explosion already over 200 years. Well, that's the washing slash maintenance room again. So who did the kitchen staff have to share with? Please tell me it was the janitors. You don't want to know what the secret sauce is. Hello, hello. Was that you, Christine, or was that Vera? I can't imagine what it must be like to open your mouth only to hear someone else's voice. Worse still, your inner thoughts and dreams are probably still in your old voice. That must feel like an out-of-body experience. It's a good thing telephones are not as prevalent these days. Imagine trying to convince your next of kin that no, it really is you, and you really do need them to send you money to get home. Christine Voice of the Brotherhood. Christine Voice. Alright Christine, I'm right outside and no, I didn't go into any orthodox lately, so it is me. You can put the gun away now. Holy shit, look at this room. Now that's what I call excessive. Even at a place built by the rich, for the rich, there's a hierarchy. Oh, Miss Keys, you dabbled in science? The quick, the quick scribe jumped over the lazy paladin. I would hardly describe you as lazy. Ooh, an autodoc and a skeleton. What kind of party have I missed? You made it. Good. There's to talk. I'll keep this quick in case my voice goes out. Okay, no offense, but it's weird seeing your face move like that. It also means I no longer have the luxury of putting words in your mouth while pretending to be ignorant of what you're actually trying to say. Oh well. Could have been worse. You have the voice of a pre-war singer. Do I? Sounds off to my ears. Hard to tell. Not to mention it. Hurts like hell to swallow. <clears throat> Might be why I got moved off to this suite. It's hers. That's her over there. Got trapped by security like I did. Just took a different way out. Oh, we can open that can of worms some other time. But now that you can finally speak again, I'm gonna act extremely out of character and listen for once. So please. I've been hunting the one who hijacked your pit boy, Elijah, for... some time. He cannot leave the Sierra Madre alive. What he's done? What he's done here is nothing compared to what he's done in the past. The only way to bring him out is if you get to the vault. He won't allow you to go down there alone. That's when we kill him. Okay, good to see that I wasn't a million miles away when I guessed that you were on a mission out here. And you've been carrying this burden for quite a while, haven't you? How long has it been? Too long. Thought I might have had a chance to settle it before this event happened. But then the chance slipped away again. Uh, sorry, but not only is it weird to hear you speak with that voice, it's also weird hearing that voice talk about something so... morbid. So what did he do to get someone like you on his back? He... cut me off from someone I cared about a long time ago. He used his status to break us apart. So I had to find a new purpose. 
Same banner. Then he became unstable, left a trail of crimes across the wasteland. Once word reached us, I was ordered to kill him. Not gonna go into details, huh? Okay, I get it. Part of it is personal, and the rest is probably classified. He already mentioned that he knows you, so I can only assume he knows what your mission is too. Weird that he left you alive after all this time and made you into his slave. The man's got a sick sense of humor. He saw me, before the scars, at a place far from here. It's where he found some of the technology he uses now. It's a place called the Big Empty. The name's deceptive, if you know where to look. Almost got trapped there. There was someone else, though, who came along. Knew about Elijah. Someone else? Did Elijah's activities catch the attention of people outside the Brotherhood? I imagine the NCR might be motivated to keep track of a rogue former elder. For all you know, they've got bounty hunters going after him too. Is that how this other person knew about all this? No idea. A courier. Wore an old world flag on his back. He was the one who pulled me out there. Told me where Elijah had gone. Helped me heal up. Listen to my story. He... sympathized. Another courier? Well, we are a proactive bunch if I'm anything to go by. Was that why you gave me the benefit of the doubt? Because of this other courier? Not the wisest decision, but I do appreciate your trust. Sounds like he did too. He said he understood what it meant to track someone who had such a... impact on his past life. He said people were like couriers, sometimes never understanding the messages they brought. That's who he was hunting for. Some courier. Oh. Why? Did that courier steal his package? Because that's something I can relate to. I can't imagine what kind of package it must have been to have that much impact, although I am in no place to judge. Anyway, I'm glad we finally set things straight. That said, I know it was difficult when you couldn't speak, but if I knew about your mission sooner, we could have done a hell of a lot more preparation. Wasn't sure until now I could trust you. Now I know. Look, when I woke up here, however that happened, I had this key on me. I think it belongs to her. Haven't had a chance to use it yet. Might open the dresser or the safe. Didn't have time to experiment with it before you arrived. Here you go. Wow. And Domino, of all people, told me to be more respectful to Vera Keys. Now you're actively encouraging me to loot the dead. We speak the same language. I love it. So, how did it go in that switching station? It just occurred to me that even if you were comfortable going down into that elevator shaft, there was no way you could have gotten yourself out of it quickly enough before the locals swarmed the place. The gala went off. The switching station opened up. I thought the screeching in the auto dock was bad. Station worse. Got outside, saw the light show, and it was enough to make me run to the casino. Also, it seemed like the lights and speakers were helping to guide me. Guess your master wanted a backup in case you died. As for being assigned to this floor, maybe it's because of my new voice. Your guess is as good as mine. Maybe it recognized me as a guest. But you were still unable to speak when I left you. Did your voice come back while I was away? In any case, the security system here has a sense of humor. It put you and Domino in the relevant places, but then it left the super mutant in the kitchen. I can only assume it's because he kept complaining about being hungry, as opposed to the system thinking he's the right candidate to be the new head chef. And it just left me in the lobby. Guess I'm not special enough, or it just thought I'm a regular tourist, like Domino kept saying. Ain't that a shot to my ego? Anyway, about your voice, how do you feel about that autodoc right there? It's not an enclosed model. Maybe after everything's over, you can use that to get your old voice back. Yeah, it's still functional. A lot of garbage data on it. Its basic procedures should still work fine. And considering who it was assigned to, you can bet it's top of the line. Any chance you can tell what kind of procedure it was performing near the end? I can see. Check the route. Recent diagnostics. A lot of medex was dispensed for... Vera Keys. Guess that's her corpse there for certain. And why all those meds are scattered around in here. Here's the medical report. Looks like she had some sort of terminal condition. Diagnosis isn't conclusive. Must have been painful. I'm not even sure she knew if these medical reports are enough. She must have been numb most of the time. Terminal condition? See, this is what I was trying to tell Domino. She wasn't a junkie, she was dying. But obviously he wasn't the one suffering, so he didn't give a shit. Well, either way, 
If your voice fools the security systems, then it should fool this auto dock, so it should work for you. Maybe you can get your scars healed up properly as well. No. They run a lot deeper than that. While I was hunting Elijah in the Big Empty, he trapped me in one of those medical research centers buried there. It... did something to my head, and I got off lucky. It's difficult enough to read now, and somehow the leap between what's in my head and words... It just ends up being a mishmash of symbols, not letters. Can still do math, formulas, equations... Writing poetry's out. Well, if there's any consolation, you could just record what you want written down and have someone else do it for you. There'll be ways to help you live a normal life again. Just need to find someone to help you and think outside the box a little. But what the hell is this big empty? Sounds like a place for mad scientists with a blade fetish. Don't ever show them one of these space age knives. Yeah, I saw records of other patients and what had been done to them. Some couldn't hear anything but static. Others just gibbering wrecks, never going back. And Elijah was on his way here, so I couldn't stop to see if it was something I could fix. If you can even fix what happened to me when they jabbed the electrodes into my skull and turned my head into a flashlight. Then I got here, and my voice got severed. Now I have a new one. Another thing Elijah has to answer for. Ah, uh, about that. Would you believe that of all the crimes that were committed against you, that was one thing Elijah wasn't responsible for? No. That was courtesy of Dean, the second worst person in this casino. Dean? Dean Domino? Why would he want to torture me? If he wanted to do that, he could keep his singing career going. Or keep staring at me. Well, it wasn't personal as far as I could tell. The elevator to the vault has an audio lock, and it can only respond to Vera Keys' voice. And since Vera herself is, as you can see, unavailable, altering your voice became his best alternative. And that would also explain why there were so many bodies in that clinic. Elijah wasn't the one experimenting, Domino was. To the vault. Of course. That makes sense. If it makes you feel any better, I was going to execute him after he told me about this. But then I figured you should have that honor. That said, you don't sound too upset by this. You're not gonna let him get away with this, are you? I've done worse. Much worse. And for more hopeless causes. And I will again. Okay, I was not expecting you to be so... understanding about this. You're not saying that you would have done the same if you were in his shoes, are you? You're the only half-decent person here. Please don't ruin that. Well, either way... He's still around, so if you change your mind, then by all means, do what you gotta do. In the meantime, I need to recalibrate your collar, and then we need to figure out what the password is you need to say to the audio lock. For the time being, I suggest we keep playing Elijah's game until we can physically get to him. The only way to bring him out is if you get to the vault. He won't allow you to go down there alone. That's when we kill him. Let's do things one step at a time, shall we? After everything I've seen and heard, we could both use a moment to reflect. And we certainly can't afford to be hasty about how we deal with Elijah. Don't want a repeat of the big empty, do we? Now, will you please take a seat and relax? This shouldn't take long. He's not an easy opponent. If I can, I'll help. Might be able to figure something out using the Sierra Madre's computer systems. I've done worse for more hopeless courses, and I will again. Oh, Christine, way to suddenly become someone else for me to worry about. Either way, I'm not letting you consume yourself on my watch. You have oh, fuck me, of course! Now, go to main lobby to thread the music sequence together. Shit! Yeah, I get the gist. Oh, what the? Don't burn this place down, that's my job! Once again, you're not doing your job right, Hollow Vera. Uh, not that I'm doing much better at mine. Oh, are we getting tired? Now you can sleep forever. You're welcome. Oh, of course you brought friends. You're only allowed to bring a plus one. There are no group rate discounts. Oh my god, I am so tempted to throw a grenade. You have no idea, Sinclair. You should be grateful that I am sympathetic to how much resources you poured into this place. Fuck me, look at how deep that spear is. It's all thanks to your space age knives. You guys, meanwhile, are not being sympathetic to the well-being of this place. You helped to build the Sierra Madre, didn't you? Have some professional respect for your work. And you! Where's your invitation? 
We don't need your kind here. You're not even wearing a suit. I would call the bouncer, but that would just be me right now. I'm not gonna escort you to the exit either, because you know full well where the door is. Are you out of spears yet? Pull another one out of your ass, I dare you. Oh no, you go back to sleep, sir. We don't need you right now. Uh, just to make sure you stay that way, here's my homemade sedative. Works like a charm every time. For the love of God, that is a prohibited item, sir. Come here. You are banned for life. And now that you're dead, you are no longer banned. Would you like to join the exclusive club? Don't worry, I've already added you to the list. Okay, don't try to skip the line, sir. You need to pay extra for that. Oh, for goodness sake. Look at you. Don't try to climb out, you only make things worse. Look, just relax, okay? We'll get you out of there. The paramedics will see to it. Uh... Never mind, I'll call the Undertaker instead. Okay, that's gotta be it, right? How many construction workers did Sinclair hire? Say what you will about the working conditions, but that man kept the whole goddamn community employed. And there are still more of them outside. I can hear them banging on the doors. Alright, I'm just gonna hit all the options and hope that something happens, because frankly, I've been winging it this whole time. Wait, was the Vera hologram off? I didn't even notice in all the commotion. And that's no longer showing an error. Uh-oh. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna grab the audio fragment and leave. The locals can handle the consequences of my actions, which is my favorite way of handling the consequences of my actions. Well, you're not shooting lasers at me, so I'm gonna assume the security system is well and truly fucked. Hopefully I'll see you again soon, at which point I'm expecting a whole congregation to greet me. Okay, now I have to deal with a different kind of problem. What to do with Christine? I thought she was the most reasonable person here, but there was a tiny hint of madness throughout that conversation. I mean, I want to kill Elijah as much as her, but I'm getting the same feeling from her as I do from a gambling addict. Someone who has fallen very deep into the sunk cost fallacy. She needs an intervention. Oh hey, you totally heard all of that, didn't you? Well, initiating bullshit protocols. You're back. You sure you still want me here, callers and all? Not much for waiting around with a bomb around my neck. Well, no offense, but I need your voice more than your gun right now. And we both had a bomb around our neck ever since we got here. At this point, I barely notice it anymore. It's gonna feel weird when we finally get it off. Anyway, I'm still not 100% sure, but I think the reason why I had to track down and recalibrate everyone's collar was so that I could download song fragments from each section of the casino and piece together the password. Which means I had to go back to the lobby every time, and believe me when I say, the locals are not impressed with customer service right now. Surprised that super mutant didn't eat you. And don't get me started on Dean. So, I just rasp out some words and the vault opens? That woman, the starlet, she didn't build this place. Why would the builder do that? Well, if you could hear what the holograms were saying in the other rooms, you may have figured it out already. And besides, you Brotherhood members live in a bunker for 90% of your life, so you probably already noticed that this casino is a little more than meets the eye. I know. The sealed doors, the security, it's almost a fortress. Think that's why we're being ordered to come here and crack it open? Well, yeah, hence why there's a vault in this casino, and it's pretty obvious that Elijah is not after pre-war currency. As for why the Builder would use Vera Keys as a literal key, well, how badly do you resent Elijah for keeping you separated from the one you love? And what wouldn't you do to protect that person? Considering what you said about hopeless causes, I am genuinely terrified of how you would answer that question. Love makes people do strange things. Won't argue that. It can drive you crazy sometimes if you can't... connect. If they loved each other, and they were together. I suppose that's all that mattered. But she's in that side room, dead, because the casino wouldn't let her leave. And who knows where he is? Yeah, well, that relationship involved blackmail, betrayal, and a lot of one-sided resentment from an extremely petty ghoul. I sure hope your relationship was a bit more positive than that. Anyway, the password is probably the lyrics to this song that Elijah told me to piece together. I'm not expecting you to actually sing it, but hey, you do have a pre-war singer's voice now, so why the hell not? Alright, if you go down there, are you prepared? What if you don't come back? Um, why is that suddenly a concern? 
Have I made you doubt my credentials as a stubborn piece of shit who likes to kick the Green Reaper in the balls on a regular basis? Honestly, Christine, aside from the collar, this wouldn't even be in my top 10 most ridiculous exploits this month. Besides, if I do encounter problems, you can always come down after me. You are Vera Keys now as far as the system is concerned, so you should have no problem getting through whatever's down there. I... just wanted to make sure you're ready. When you go down there, that may be it for us. We won't be needed anymore. The one who made these collars, he'll follow you down there. And he won't let you leave. He's not one for sharing. Never was. I mean, of course Elijah would go down there. That's what we're banking on, isn't it? He's been using us all as sacrificial pawns from the beginning, and chances are he won't make a move until I clear away every single obstacle down there. That's the only way to draw him out. But about that, Christine. He has to come through here to get into the vault. I'm gonna ask you to do something counterintuitive and let him pass through here unmolested. Can you do that? I... I... can't let him leave here. Look, you've done so much, and he's not gonna show himself until you go down there. I never said we're going to let him leave here. I said I need you to stand by and do nothing while he comes through. That's two different things. Look, I have no doubt that you're capable of killing him, but that's not the point. I need you to let go of this obsession of yours and let someone else finish the mission. I can't let go. Every time I've thought about it, I've lost him so many times. He needs to die. What happened here with us? He's... he's done so much worse. I know he has, but are you hearing yourself? Christine, I appreciate you saying that I've done so much, but look at yourself in the mirror. Look at how much you have already lost because you couldn't let go. Well, I can promise you this right now. There is no scenario where Elijah makes it out of this place alive. Either I end him down there or you end him when he comes back up. But fact of the matter is, that old man has been living rent-free in your head for far too long. And you killing him won't be enough which is why I'm going to try everything I can to do it for you, so that you can finally move on. You have to promise me. Promise me you'll deal with him. If I see him, I- Oh, come on now, Christine. Is this all you've been reduced to? The mission and nothing else? Do you have a life to go back to after all this? Did you even think about that? Where is the person you love right now? Do you even know? You don't, do you? How could you when all you can see is Elijah, when all you can think about is Elijah? <sighs> Christine, you've been shackled by this mission for far too long. Let me carry this burden now so you can free yourself. Because if you can't let go, then you're no better than a super mutant who can't let go of his hunger and need for control. No better than a ghoul who can't let go of his ego and jealousy. And no better than an old man who can't let go of his lust for power and the Sierra Madre. All right. All right, I'll... But I'll need to leave this floor. He'll pick up my collar and... Look, do whatever it is you have to do, all right? Just pay attention to where I am and nothing else. Go after him if and only if I fail. And once the dust settles, I'll come and find you. And we're getting a fucking drink because holy shit have we earned it. I... never mind. Let me get the vault open. Begin again. But know when to let go. <laughs> Sounds like you. Lady, you have no idea how much I've had to let go. And believe it or not, when you do let go, it's one of the most liberating feelings you can experience. Did you just wave goodbye to the terminal? Are you one of those people who wants to give machines equal rights? If so, I have a robot back home I would like you to meet. Begin again, but no one to let go. That's it? It was that simple? <laughs> and all you had to do was get your throat ripped out by an over-engineered scalpel. Well, I'll grab a few supplies and then make my way down. Because believe it or not, Elijah, I have the patience to take this slowly. You're gonna have to follow my schedule now. Hey, are you sure you don't want to kill Domino? Cause believe me when I say I know a thing or two about settling a score. <laughs>